Now, a couple of weeks ago, when we were speaking, we were talking about idols of the heart. And uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, as we were talking about the idols of the heart, I mentioned some things about how demonic forces can uh, attach themselves to the idols of the heart. Some things that we might have in our hearts that are, are really our idols, some things that we put before God, uh, some patterns of thinking that we put before God. They become idols of the heart. And when they become idols of the heart, then they are in a direct conflict with communicating with God. You know, there's lots of people who come to God in prayer, and but what they're doing is praying through the idols of their heart. And when they pray through the idols of their heart, then there's this block there. The, the prayers are not getting through to God properly because they have idols in their heart. What do I mean by that? Well, if the most important thing for you in the world, you have put some kind of an idol in your heart in some way, shape, or form that, you know, maybe, I don't know, it could be some material thing, could be a house, could be a car, it, it could be a spouse that you believe for. If you put this idol up in your heart and that is, takes precedence over everything else, that becomes an idol in your heart. Every, and every time you pray, you're praying through that idol because you've got that set before you rather than God before you. And the only thing before the Father is to be the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one to be between us is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't want to set idols in our hearts. And we talked quite a bit about that last week and about how there's uh, uh, idols in the world and how there's idols in government and how there's idols in, in the way people think and how there's the, one of the big idols today is this is my truth. This is my truth. You know, the, that seems to be the, the cute phrase today. People are not seeking for the truth. All they want to do is express what they call their truth. In other words, the way they think. It doesn't matter if it lines up with the Word of God or not. It's their truth, truth that is important to them. But it is the, the truth that we're after today. We want to look after uh, God, and uh, we want to follow after God and follow after His truth and not pay attention to the things that the world is trying to throw at us and trying to get us to uh, incorporate into our own lives. The culture is going one way. The church is to go the other way. Amen, Pastor Bill. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.8, the Apostle Paul writing to the church of Thessalonica, and he's saying some things to them that, that, to help them and establish them in the things of God, and he kind of reiterates a little bit about what they were like. And he says, uh, for, from you, for from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. In other words, these, these Thessalonians, they were really good at, at standing before God, and their faith was going out abroad and been, been spread abroad, the news of it. And it says in verse 9, For they themselves declare, de declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivered us from the wrath to come. So here Paul is exhorting them and encouraging them because they turned away from idols. He, they turned away from the idols that they were serving in order to serve the living God. When we read this, we often think, I don't know about you, but I think about sometimes when people have idols, they have some kind of statue that they make of some kind and they, they bow down to it. This is the thoughts that we have when it comes to idols. But, and that is what happens and that is what takes place and that's what the apostle paul was writing about and we do have to remember when we're reading the scriptures that paul is writing to a society that was used to uh, idol worship they were idol worshipers and the thing about that is that there was demonic forces attached to the islands or pardon me the idols that they were worshiping and so they were influenced by demonic forces and paul said you turned away from those idols and turn to the living God. You are no more to be influenced by these demonic forces that would be attached to these idols that they have made for themselves or even idols of their heart. They would be uh, delivered from the demonic influence that constantly plagued them in that season. And Paul was encouraging them, saying, you've done well, you turned from the idols that you were worshiping. And that's one thing. And you might say, well, Pastor Bill, we're Christians. Do we? We don't have idols. Well, 
I, I think Christians have, many of them have idols in their hearts. I believe sometimes that there's a lot of times that Christians are harboring some things in their hearts. They, they want something. It can be even an idol of unforgiveness. It can even be an idol of, I'm determined, my unforgiveness is me more important to me than anything else. I think I've told you this story before about this woman that was dying in the hospital. She was a Sunday school teacher for years. She was dying in the hospital, and the pastor was go and pray for her all the time, and he wasn't getting anywhere at all. And finally he said, Lord, what's going on here? It seems to me that I'm not getting any breakthrough. And the Lord uh, told him, he said, ask her about her parents. And so he went in there and asked about her father. And she said, oh, I have, he said, H what was your relationship like with your father? And she said, oh, I had a wonderful relationship with my father. And the pastor thought, oh, well, then uh, what about your mother? How is your relationship with your mother? And she said, don't you mention her before me. Don't you mention her name before me. And he said, the pastor told her, he said, if you don't forgive your mother, you're going to die. And she said, I would rather die than forgive my mother. Talk about idols of the heart. I would rather die than forgive my mother. Well, she had an idol of unforgiveness in her heart. See, an idol can be anything in your heart. If it's something that's away from God, if it's something that, that is keeping you from experiencing the fullness of God and the fullness of God's relationship, and you can't full experience a full relationship with the Lord if you've got unforgiveness in your heart or any kind of an idol or if you're messing around with any kind of demonic stuff, your relationship will be polluted. 1 John 5, 21, the Apostle John told, told the children that he was writing to, the church that he was writing to, he says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. You see, that culture was well aware of what it was like to serve idols. And sometimes I believe that in North America here, it's camouflaged so much now, we don't realize sometimes that we are actually serving idols. We're, it can, uh, work can be an idol. Work can take precedent over everything else. It can be an idol. Even family can be an idol. We can make those things an idol. Pleasure can be an idol. All those things can, can be idols, and God doesn't want us to have idols in our heart because it pollutes our relationship with Him. And God sent his son into the world so that he could redeem mankind so that mankind could have relationship with him. That, that's how important it is to him to have relationship with his children. A good father always desires relationship with his children, always desires for them to come close often so that they can talk and have intimate relationship with one another. But there are some things I believe that keep us from idols. There's a few points that I, I want to make uh, this morning concerning them. I believe there are some things that we can do in our lives that actually allow uh, open doors to come so that idols of the heart might well up within us. And when we have an idol in our heart, there are demonic influences involved. This is what I want us to realize. I know in the culture that we live in, there's not a lot of talk about demonic, and the people think that all that stuff happened back years ago or over in some other foreign lands. Listen, there's just as much demonic activity here in Prince Edward Island as there is anywhere. There are demonic influences that are coming, and you and I have to make sure that we don't open the doors to such influence. We shut the door to those influences that would try to uh, harass us so that we can get the things done that God wants us to do while we're here on earth. So I want to mention a few of these. Uh, you know, there are so, there's so much confusion in the world today. There's so much uh, confusion around information that we get. We, wanted, we don't want to add to that confusion by having, uh, being influenced by spirits, by demonic spirits. We don't want to open door to them at all. We have to talk about these things. We have to let people real, know what's open doors. There's, a, there's an old story about a man who tried to save the city of Sodom. And he went about uh, trying to tell everybody to straighten out, trying to tell everybody to live right, trying to tell everybody to get right with God. And finally they said to him, listen, nobody's listening to you. Why do you keep on saying this stuff? And he said, well, I know nobody's listening to me, but I'm going to keep shouting about it. I'm going to keep talking about it because if I don't, 
then the chances of you changing me will be much greater. So he's saying, I'm going to keep shouting at it so I don't change and become like you. So we, we have to continue to, to con talk about these things, prepare ourselves so that we don't get caught up in being changed like the world. So I want to mention a few things that people yield to sometimes, even in Christian circles. Some of these things I'll, I'll mention, you probably, oh, Christians would never do that. But no, they do it. So-called Christians, at least Christians who go by the name of Christianity. Some of the occultic things, uh, one I'll mention is, is tarot cards reading, readings. People are into that. Uh, people go to others who will read their, their future through tarot cards. Another was Ouija boards. I wonder how many of us in this room we've got, ever got involved in that. There are things, there are demonic forces that attach themselves to Ouija boards. There, whenever we go looking for prophetic direction, because that's what it is, prophetic direction about our lives, whenever we go looking for that in any other place other than the Lord Jesus Christ, we are opening the door to demonic forces. If we go looking for it in any other place, demonic forces can get attached to it. Psychic readings. This refers to sensitive or non-physical or supernatural forces and influences marked by extraordinary or mysterious sensitivity, perception, or understanding. That definition comes from uh, the Webster's Dictionary. It's certainly uh, something outside this realm of the natural. And by going through that area, we're opening the door to demonic spirits to be able to speak to us. And these things would not be popular at all. It would not be... Nobody would go to any of those people if there wasn't some fruit to it, if there wasn't some effect to it, if there wasn't some demonic forces releasing some information to other people around them, to the people who go to these psychic readers and so forth. There is influence, there is activity, but it's coming from the wrong source. It's coming from a demonic source. It's coming from a source that will lead them astray. They may get a good word, and they might make them really happy about it and so forth, but eventually payday is coming sometimes because the spirit that begins to have influence in them during that particular moment will have influence in them later on as well and begin to play havoc in their lives. We want to stick to Jesus. We want to stick to what he, what he honors, what he acknowledges, what he says is okay rather than going to these other sources. Yoga is another one. You know, yoga is, is so much a part of Hinduism that you, you can't have Hinduism without yoga and you can't have yoga without Hinduism. It, the, the, the folks from the India who will talk, who, you know, India, is, I think it's 90% or more are Hindu, is Hinduism there, and uh, they will plainly tell you that the uh, yoga in the Western world is nothing but a recruiting venue for Hinduism. And Hinduism is, their main belief is incarnation. It means you're going to die and you're going to come back again and you're going to live the life and you're going to keep coming back until you get better and better and better. The blood of Jesus has a better way. The blood of Jesus has a much better way. He washes us and cleanses us from all sin. We don't have to keep going around and around and around. We can come before the Lord Jesus Christ and have him wash us, cleanse us with his blood. No, it is part of the tactic that uh, Hinduism uses in order to uh, be an avenue of recruitment for that religion, for Hinduism itself. Going to your hor horoscope reading every day, that's another door opener. That's another way to get influence. You're looking. Why would anybody go to a, read a horoscope for today? Well, it's going to a reading to get a prophetic word for my life for today. And you're going outside the principles of God. You're going outside of God in order to get a prophetic word. You see, demons give prophetic words too. Are you with me? <laughs> They give prophetic words too. And if we go to them, they'll give us something 
that aligns exactly with the idol that we have in our hearts. That will make it look really good. There will be demonic forces that will accommodate us very, very easily. Going to any source outside what is sanctioned by God leaves you in an area of witchcraft and open to demonic influence. Remember that. When you're going to, if you think about reading horoscopes or doing any of these things that are outside the scope of God. Now let me read from John chapter 10, verse 7. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to kill, steal, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus is saying, I am the door. I am the way into the supernatural realm. I am the way for you to be able to receive what you need to receive from the supernatural realm. I am the way. I am the door. I am the one who is able to lead you in the right path so that you will only get things that will be ben- benefit you and that it will enhance your relationship with the Father. He said, I am the door, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. If we try to get into the supernatural realm, try to get influence from the supernatural realm from any other way other than Jesus, if we try to go through another door, we're going to get something that is devastating to us, something that will kill, steal, and destroy. So we only want to go to Jesus. He will give us. I'm convinced there's lots of people who have gotten their talents from the wrong source. I remember years before I was saved in a, uh, at a party one night, and there was a guy playing his guitar, and uh, he was, we, were, we were serving the devil then, and he was playing guitar, and I was amazed at well he was, how well he was playing. And when he was done, I said to him, I said, man, I said, I never seen you play that guitar like that before. And he looked at me with fear in his eyes, and he said, Bill, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. No, you open yourself to demonic forces. They'll accommodate us. Jesus said, I am the way. See, drugs are uh, another doorway into the supernatural. And demonic forces will attach itself to it. You ever know any drug addict, been a drug addict for a long time, who's having life? Or is it steal, kill, and destroy? Steal, kill, and destroy. Would that be a better description of someone who's been an addict? No, it'll still... It'll kill, steal, and destroy. destroy. Jesus is all we need. He made provision for us. Even when he left his disciples, he just didn't leave them all alone. He sent the Holy Spirit to us. He sent him to be able to come to us and lead us and guide us and direct us and lead us into that uh, supernatural experience because uh, experiencing Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural experience. Walking with him is a supernatural experience. Jesus knew how to uh, live in the supernatural and the natural at, all at the same time. He could, it seemed to me that he was in constant relationship with the Father. He did what he seen the Father doing, but yet he lived a full life here on earth as well as a human being. And this is, this is what he wants for us, to be so connected with the Father without having any, any in pollution, uh, pollution in their life, any spiritual pollution in our life that comes from demonic forces. Remember, Jesus said, the God of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. In other words, Jesus didn't dabble dabble in anything that would cause, that that would allow the enemy to get a hook in him. Jesus didn't dabble in anything that was outside of the Father's pleasure, that would get in the way of his communion with the Father. He stayed walking with Jesus continually. And I believe that's what he desires for us as well. All the truth we need is in Jesus. We don't have to go outside the boundaries that he has set. We can stay within the boundaries and have everything we need. And I believe, oh, For you live in a world where confusion is dominating those who do not know and understand the ways of the Lord. For the Lord's ways are higher than the world's ways. 
But the Lord in his goodness and his desire is to bring truth to his people so that they will not be confused even while the world might go in a pattern that is destructive. Know that I have laid a direct path for you to follow. And if you will stay with me, you will find that life is at the end of the path that you are on. For Jesus himself declared, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus and you will arrive at your place of destiny, the destiny that I have for you. For you see, there are many, there are many who started off, but oh, they've veered off the path. They have went another way, the, the path that leads into darkness. But you, you stay with me and I will stay with you. And you will find in the end, you'll be rejoicing with those who have gone before you. For you see, I have made a way for you and I am able to keep you from the devil's tactics if you'll follow after me with all your heart leave off the ways of the world follow after me and you will find your end to be glorious for you will spend eternity with me says the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. glory to God hallelujah praise the name of Jesus hallelujah stay stay with God don't listen to other voices Jesus said my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. A stranger they will not follow. So he, he says, a stranger, they're, they're, so there's other voices out there. But he says, my sheep won't follow them. Because my sheep know my voice. They follow after me. There are many voices out there. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in, in first, pardon me, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. He said this. No wonder for the Satan himself transforms him into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So he's saying that Satan himself will transform himself into an angel of light, and he, all his cohorts, the ones that work with him, they'll tr try to transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Oh, it might sound good, but it's not God. And Jesus is saying, stay with me. Stay with me. I believe we're on the path of victory. I believe that the Lord has led us to this place in this season to gain a great victory. For the Lord, I believe, is hovering over his church today, hovering over us. I believe that. He's opening doors. Glory to God. He's opening doors. I was praying this morning in the prayer room all alone. I was praying. Praying, and it seems like I couldn't even get anywhere. It seems like, you know, sometimes it's really tough in prayer. And uh, all of a sudden, a prophetic word jumped out of my spirit, and it just said that, that it went something like this, that out of your spirit will come a word of victory because the victory has already been won. And boy, when I heard that, that just the anointing fell on me, and I just started rejoicing because of, of uh, the presence of God, the anointing of God, the victory that we have before God. We're in a time of the greatest victory that the church can ever have. We're not in, we don't need to be in times of confusion. We don't need to be in times of distress. We don't have to worry about the days ahead. We just rejoice in the very time that we're in because I believe God is moving his church through a place of fruitfulness that we have never been before. And I believe that if we're following after him, we'll find fruit to pick everywhere. That there'll be people everywhere that we can witness to, that we can tell about the Lord Jesus Christ. And there'll be a positive response. It won't, it won't always be a positive, but there'll be times, the more seed we sow out there, the more fruit that will come. And don't be surprised when people reject you, when you tell them about what Jesus has done for you. Don't, don't let that throw you off. Just continue to push through. Just recently I was telling a man about how Jesus redeemed me and saved me from hell. And uh, when I, I told him this, I said, uh, I said, whenever I found out I was on the road to hell, I made a change. And when I said I was on the road to hell, he laughed a little bit. And uh, th they do that because they don't know what to do with that. They, they just kind of chuckle. So I just I refused to be moved by it. I just kept telling them my story, telling them about Jesus, telling them about, about what he did for me. And when we do that, there are seeds being planted in their spirits that I believe at the right time will take fruit and root, and it will produce an abundant harvest for the Lord, for the King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory to God. We can't hold off from telling others about Jesus. Do you want to be? A, do you want to have a tenacious spirit like the Apostle Paul? 
He said in Romans uh, 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. The reason why he wasn't ashamed of it, because he knew there was power in the gospel of Christ. There was power in sharing the word, power in sharing your testimony. He knew that there was power in there, so he would go forth and share it. And if we come to the place where we actually believe that we have the power of God within us, that we have been granted Holy Spirit power to speak the word, and we believe we have it, we'll go out and do it. But I want to say this to us. I want us to be real. I don't, I don't want to uh, camouflage anything. I don't want to put a veneer over anything and say, oh, yes, we have the power of Jesus. The Holy Spirit has come upon us, so we have the power of witness. That's one thing to say that, but it means nothing unless we're doing it. It means nothing unless we're doing it. And if we really believe we had it, had it we'd do it. I don't believe in playing church. Every one of us need to get serious about telling others about Jesus Christ and all he's done for us. There's a world that is lost. They're going to hell around us. And we have the source of life resting on the inside of us that we can share to them and see them delivered. Glory to God. It's not that we don't have it. Often we're just keeping it to ourselves. Now I'm praying, if, if you want... If you want this on the inside of you, if you want to have a boldness to share Jesus with those around you, I want you to stand up. I want to pray for you. If this is something that you want to do, you desire to do, you know, if you don't desire to do it, then at least admit it to yourself that you don't desire to do it. Just say to the Lord, Lord, Help me, because I don't, I don't have any desire to tell others about Jesus. They'll get cross at me. My family will shun me. Well, we know that'll happen. But what means more to you? Bring another soul into the kingdom or be liked by everybody else? Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for your grace. Lord, I am reminded that the early church prayed for boldness. They too were intimidated by sharing Jesus, but they prayed for boldness. And the scripture says that boldness came upon them and they went out and shared the word with great boldness. And so, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for a spirit of boldness in sharing the gospel that would fall on everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, that there would be such a, a stirring in our hearts to share what Jesus has done that, I, that would override any intimidation that we might have, anything that the enemy would bring to try to shut us down. Father, there'd be such a boldness in it that would just override it, override the enemy's tactics in the name of Jesus, that we might share what Jesus has done in our lives. Father, that others might come into the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may a spirit of boldness rest upon each one now. In Jesus' precious holy name, I ask, dear God, boldness, boldness, boldness be upon each one, Lord, I pray. Boldness to share Jesus, I pray, right now. Say this with me. I receive a spirit of boldness to share the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.